Talk to us about where your drones are right now and how they're being used. Yeah, so our drones, basically, we have a system that allows the drones to actually start fires. And they it's an aerial ignition system that's used to actually start fires to fight fires. So they, the firefighters are using these in Oregon, Northern California, um, Colorado extensively. And what they do is they actually put start fires from the air to create fire breaks so that the main fire doesn't have the fuel to keep going. So talk to us about how your technology actually works. You basically stop fires by starting fires, right? Yeah, so our system has basically these little ping pong balls that have a chemical in them that when we inject them and drop them, they'll start a fire about 30 to 60 seconds after hitting the ground. And with that, we can actually remove the fuel in advance of the main fire so that we can have a prescribed burn or controlled burn to create this fire line that then when the main fire comes, it doesn't have any fuel and it'll go out. And this is, you know, when you see the, you know, news stories about a fire is 50% contained, it's because they've actually removed a lot of the fuel around the boundary to prevent it from spreading. And one of the main ways they do that is by actually starting fires safely. So what are the, talk to us about the safety benefits of this technology, because as I understand it, like 25 of the deaths related to wire f wildfires are aerial deaths. And so you are helping uh, to keep people who might be, you know, piloting a helicopter, for example, out of danger. Yeah, so yeah, about a quarter of all uh, fatalities in firefighting are related to aviation because you know, these these pilots and aircraft they're you know really put put at risk and it's a very dangerous job to be flying low and slow over fires. So what we've developed is a drone system and the payload for the drone that allows it to actually do these burns that are otherwise done by people in helicopters. And you know, just this past year in Texas, a firefighter died doing exactly this type of ignition operation from the air. So our system allows firefighters to actually you know, operate our system from a safe location. It, it allows them to just do this you know, much, in a much safer way. And it's about 10 times less expensive than operating a helicopter on these fires. We're looking at some of the biggest wildfires in the state of California and the state of Colorado's history. Are, are there any limitations? I should probably say, what are the limitations of, of this technology? Because certainly technology can't do everything. Yeah, so, I mean, we still need to really coordinate with the uh, people, the firefighters, the boots on the ground. Um, you know, they're, but one of the advantages of our type of system is that we can actually operate at night and operate safely. So the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management, National Parks, they all are using our system systems actively on these fires. And one of the main uses they have is actually using them at night when other aircraft can't fly, when it's not safe to have people out near these fires. They actually use our system to actually ignite these backburns on the fires at night when otherwise they can't do any any of their their work from the air. So this really opens up new opportunities. Of course, you know these types of drones are not replacing helicopters or or manned aircraft right now. They're really filling a gap and supplementing the you know the the demands of the fire season. I mean, this is you know we have far too few firefighters out there right now given the scope of all these fires that have you know, come about just in the past couple of weeks. Being in California, you know, our skies are gray. This is now something that's happening year after year uh, for several months and, and starting even earlier this season than it did last season. Why do you think that's happening is, you know, we had a crazy lightning storm uh, here a few days ago. Obviously, there's climate change. There's the electrical issues, um, you know, what's your take on the root of this? Yeah, I think it's a combination of all those factors you've mentioned. I think the other aspect is that, you know, we've we've been in an era of trying to put out fires and prevent them. Whereas, you know, in nature, you know, before we were putting out these fires, small fires would happen all the time and they'd be relatively minor because there would be very little fuel built up on the forest floors. Uh, so, you know, one of the, you know, other other uses for 
our aerial ignition system that we call Ignis is to actually do these prescribed burns when it's safe to do so. So not in the middle of the dry summer, but you know, winter when it's wet, uh, you can do these prescribed burns and actually clear out a lot of this undergrowth so that when a fire comes through, it's not going to be as severe and it'll be easier to handle and put out you know, but of course, this is you know just one of the management techniques. Clearly, you know everything from you know climate change to you know just really you know these uh, lightning storms that just are kind of flukes. Uh, you know, all of these factors are also influencing these severe wildfires. Is what we're seeing now a sign that this is going to be a particularly devastating or dangerous fire season the next few months? You know, I, I think a month ago, it seemed like we were going to have a relatively mild fire season and all of a sudden it's turned around. Um, I'm, I guess, maybe optimistic that maybe we'll get some great rain and help put out a lot of these fires. But I think we need to be prepared for, you know, another devastating fire season. And as you said, you know, these are happening more and more often. And it's really critical that, you know, we we really work hard to to mitigate them throughout the year, not just when they're happening. So on that note, looking ahead, how widely is your technology deployed? Where are you expecting to use your drones this season, mostly? Yeah, so we, we work closely with the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management. And so we really are developing the software and intelligence and the, the actual payload system the drone uses. Uh, but, you know, the firefighters are the ones operating. So those, you know, big federal agencies use our system extensively. They've, you know, Alaska, California, all the way down to Florida, uh, but also state governments and private contractors use it. So, you know, in, in Florida, for instance, they use it to actually do these types of prescribed burns on their, in the marshlands to restore natural habitat. habitat. And, you know, so it's really widely used in terms of the need. Uh, we're a, you know, small startup company in Lincoln, Nebraska. We, you know, pioneered this technology. We're the first ones to you know, develop this type of systems, the only ones that, you know, have a system that is federally approved for use on fires. Um, and we're, you know, just a few years old. Uh, so we really hope that this technology will help save lives, reduce costs and, you know, reduce the amount of damage caused by these wildfires.